Hey everyone, it's Eric Swanson from the Eric Swanson Letter. And I just wanted to put together a quick little video for you all today about how I create my featured images for the Eric Swanson Letter, my blog, as it were. Now, I know the featured images you see on my blog are a far cry from great works of art. I mean, that is well established. I'm not in any way trying to claim that these featured images are so fantastic to look at. But they serve a few purposes that I am very, very pleased with. Number one, I own them. Because I'm creating them, in this case with Photoshop, and I'm going to do another little tutorial about how to do this absolutely free with Canva, they're mine. Nobody owns them except me. I don't have to attribute any credit. I don't have to pay anyone. I certainly don't need to shell out a monthly subscription fee. Oh my goodness, do I dislike having to do that. So they're mine. So that's number one. Number two, they show my branding. You know, I put a little bit of time into a very simple Eric Swanson letter logo, and I use that on the images, so that's on all my images. It is an integral part of my simple featured images. They use a very simple primary color as the backdrop, which I just choose differently, and I have a couple of techniques for doing that. And that's just very simple, and they look kind of nice. I like the little primary colors, and because the actual design of a blog, you don't want to go crazy with color, you're going to get your color from your images, from your graphics. So having those primary colors on my featured images, I love. I really love it. The other thing is the title. It's prominently displayed on the featured image, so that if that image does find itself anywhere else, when someone shares it, whatnot, it's going to have my branding and my title. And those are all good things. So let's take you through this so you can get a quick feel. It's not very complicated, but if you are a Photoshop person, Photoshop is essentially the same from the CS3 that I use to the, the modern Photoshop that you have to pay a monthly fee for. So let's go. I'm going to get into Photoshop CS3. Oh my God, that's so old. Just kidding. Okay, here we go. So the first thing, I'm going to just take this to source, is you want to start a new image. So new. Okay. Now I already have a little little template for this, but what you're basically doing is you want 800 pixels width, 400 pixels height, and you want to make sure you have square pixels. Okay. So then you just hit OK. And there's your image, right? 800 by 400. And you can make this image size anything you want. A lot of times your theme for your WordPress press blog will dictate your ideal image dimensions. I played around with this and I just found that 800 by 400 was almost like television, you know, like the film uh, ratio. It's not quite 16 by 9, but for this I don't need it to be exactly 16 by 9. So I went with this. It looks the same. It's a touch wider which I kind of like. So here it is, 800 by 400. It's a good kind of a mix between widescreen and not too big. So the images, they, they clock in around 38 kilobytes, which is nothing. That's very reasonable for your blog as they add up. So we want a background color, right? So the first thing you need, you come over to the little panel and you come down to here and you want solid color. You add a solid color. And you can pick anything. I like to go somewhere in the blue dynamics, but they can be any of these colors. And like I said, I can show you a technique where you can get um, exact colors that are really nice. But it's really what you like. So I get this nice little baby blue, or it's a darker blue. So there's your backdrop color. Next thing you want to do is I'm going to put my logo in. So I'm going to go ahead to the desktop where I've stored my white version of the Eric Swanson letter. And this is the exact right size, a PNG that I've created earlier, coming in at 10 kilobytes, nothing. So there it is, because you can't see it that well because it's all transparent. So you can drag it in here, or I'm going to drag it in right from the panel, the layers panel. And here it is, bang, and there it is. I hit the pointer, which is V, move tool. And you can put this wherever you want. So I'm going to get it in the ballpark of what I want height-wise. Then I'm going to select all, which is Control A. And you can see these controls here. I can make it go all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and I can center it up perfectly. 
that's a beautiful technique in Photoshop that I love. So this puppy is centered and it's in a pretty good spot. Then I'm going to deselect for now. Next thing, let's put the title in. So we'll grab some text. Bang. Now this is already set, but this is what I use. You can pick anything you like, obviously. Georgia 48. This is the in regular. That's the font I like. So this would be, I like to do a two-line deal. So if it would be Eric's wicked cool and i've got this sent for center cool featured image creation right and then we'll hit the move tool and move that to kind of where we're going something like that we'll do this again select all and we're going to go center that up bang beautiful beautiful and deselect so now we got everything but the icon or the icon font right so the icon is a a tool called um i think it's not fonts everywhere it's font fabulous or let me see we'll find it right here go up to f i always get it wrong here we go font awesome you can get these free if you go to font awesome just google it and you can download they have a uh one you can pay for, and you get thousands and thousands of icons in the font. And they have a free one that's amazing. Gives you like a, a thousand or a couple of thousand. It's plenty. Oh, oh, fonts. So I went and downloaded that and installed it, and I have this font awesome free. Okay, so this is what you do. So you put the thing here. And, of course, before I even do it, I'll just write this in here, icon. Right, but that's not what it's going to be, and that may not even be the right size. What I do, just since I know this, I'll select it. I do 140 for this, so I make the icon 140 size wise. Okay, so what do you do when you have font awesome? Is you go to their cheat sheet, they'll let they have a PDF cheat sheet you can download for font awesome. And it gives you all the free stuff. They're all sitting here. And you can just look through this and find them. But what I do is I use Control F for find. And I just search for what I'm looking for. So say I'm looking for a road. And there happens to be one road. So I hit that. And there it is. And that, of course, that's broadcast. So that's not what I'm looking for. So with the free selection, sometimes you don't get what you want. But how about book? What if we're looking for a book? There's six of them. There's address book, there's book dead, there's book, there's book reader, book mark, book medical, book open. I really like that book open. I also like the book itself. So let's go. So you don't fool with the title here. You select the actual icon or the icon. And you can hit this to copy it or just hit control C. You want to copy the text of that selected icon or icon. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm a silly. And you come to this, you hit the text, select the thing you want to change, and just control V for paste. Bang. There is your gorgeous, beautiful book icon. Okay. Now it's somewhat where I want it, but I'm going to go ahead and work this a bit. So we'll go select all. I am going to center it both ways. So center horizontally. See it moved. And vertically. And that's a little lower than I want. So I'm going to deselect, make sure the Move tool is selected for this font. And I'm going to just use the arrow keys. And I'm just going to get that kind of in the ballpark. Now, if you're extremely uh, picky, and this is going to drive you crazy, um, what you can do is select, right, get the uh, selection tool. And just get outside of it and make a, a rough selection in this area. And then you can actually use the transform selection and get this baby exactly the way you want it. You want it to be between this and the very top of this font, which I have to correct. And then say, yes, I like that selection. Make sure you have the move tool and that icon font selected. And you can use the vertical. So you can go down, you can go up. Bang right to the center and you deselect it and that baby's exactly where you want it so i got one correction i have to make which is this i made this the icon font which is you know fonts awesome so select everything you have to double click quite a bit and i want to go back to georgia which is what i use for this which is here and it's 48 yep and that should be it yeah so there it is there's my 
my font, my logo for the branding. There's my icon font of a book. If I was going to write something about writing or a book or, you know, whatever it is. And there's my title. Nice and big and prominent. It's a, it's a serif font that I really like. Um, and you can do, you could use this same technique and you could do anything you want. You could put an actual photo in the backdrop and, and blur it out or take the color out of it or make it monochrome or there's all kinds of things you could, you could offset the positioning of these elements or, or give them angles or these kind of things that would make it more artistic for you. But this technique can work to let you create your featured images and they're yours, or yourin, as they say in some parts of the world, which I love. And nobody can take them away from you. And they're working as a little branding machine for you and for your writing and your hard work. Why not? So anyway, this is it. Another quick thing I'll leave you with is if you want to just use this sort of as a pseudo template, save it out as a Photoshop first, right? So I'm just going to call this... Um, template. I'm just going to make this like a template, even though it's not technically a template, but it is. So I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to get it out of here. So then we want to reload that, right? Go to the desktop. There's the template right here. Just load it. Bang. Right? So there it is. Now, if you want to do something new, say you're going to do a different one. I'm going to write a blog post about um, how how to make many images from one. So there's one. There's another one. And say we want to change the icon font. So let's find, let's say, um, we'll use, we'll do this bus. Even though this has nothing to do with that. but So there's a bus. I'm going to select this little bus. And this time I'm going to do Control C. Go back into Photoshop, make sure I got the thing, select it. Oh, no, I guess I'll redo that. Select it and Control V. And there's the bus. And for the most part, it'll stay centered. And that's ready to go. So I'm going to save this as, um, I'll just call this Graphic 2, because I've just made a new graphic from that. And of course, once you're ready to, for Freddy, you would use your Photoshop compression to say Save for Web and Devices. And you can use PNG or JPEG. I like the JPEG high. And you'll save that. And uh, say, I'll call this bus featured image, right? And we can get out of there. It'll complain because of the Photoshop-y. And you can go out of there, go to the desktop. So there's your bus featured image that you just created. And look what that is, 33 kilobytes. That's nothing. And there it is, so beautiful. And of course, if you wanted to take this a step further, of course, you can go in um, and you could change that backdrop color because this is a JPEG now, so you can't do it there. You would need to go back to source, which is this graphic two. So you want to change that backdrop image. That's why you want to leave it Photoshop so you have your beautiful layers. Just double click on your color. Say you want a beautiful green. That's a little too light, so you can just darken it up till you're happy. And there you go. Now you got green with the bus. And you can just do that again. Save that as JPEG. And you can just redo this bus featured image and get rid of it. It'll complain. And there's your bus featured image is now green. So this just gives you such a nice little technique to create all the images you need to. Like I say, you can modify this as you need. And I think you'll find it helpful. Thank you so much for coming and joining me for this today. We always love it when you come to the Eric Swanson Letter. We'll speak again.